Hello, everyone. My name is Jackie Buckley, and since January 1st of this year, I've been the Acting Commissioner for the National Center for Special Education Research. As most of you know, Joe McLaughlin, our previous commissioner, retired at the end of 2022. So although I'm new to this position, I've been at IES since 2006. Many of you likely know me as a program officer for our social and behavioral portfolio. I'm very pleased to be with you all today and provide updates for Nixer. I first have to thank our co-chairs for their time, expertise, and guidance in putting together this outstanding PI meeting. It is a lot of work and I fully appreciate their efforts. It may be more work than they anticipated, so let's give them a big round of applause. I also cannot say thank you enough to this team. As you know, they are a great group to work with and have gone above and beyond over the years, especially during COVID and all the challenges that brought to education and education research to ensure that Nixer and you as grantees are successful. We always refer to ourselves as a small but mighty center, but the good news is that we are growing. A commissioner search is underway and we are in the fortunate position to be able to hire two additional program officers this year. Please reach out if you know anyone who would be interested in joining our team. There are associate research scientists and research scientist positions, which vary based on expert or based on experience, available through USA Jobs. Reach out to me or anyone on the Nixer team for more information. For today's talk, I want to briefly provide information that will set the stage for the work that we're doing, discuss Nixer funding and competitions, provide some information about recent activities in IES and Nixer, and talk about future directions for us. As you may know, it was recently the 20th anniversary of IES, and we had a lot of 20th anniversary activities. Nixer is the youngest center in IES. We were created with the reauthorization of IDEA in 2004. We opened our doors in 2005 and held our first grant competitions in 2006. So we are not quite 20 years old yet, but we definitely have a lot to celebrate. As you can see, um, we have made significant investments in research and training. We have made over $1 billion investments in our programs. That includes 546 research grants from 2006, as well as making significant investments in training the next generation of special education researchers. We have trained 80 um, postdocs and 33 early career grantees. In reflecting on our 20 years, it's important to understand how the IES centers have evolved and worked together over the years to meet our mission. I'm not going to go into great detail on this slide, but this is just a visual representation of how the centers in IES and our peer review process work together and interact to move from what is, such as describing conditions on the ground, through um, the research center activities to thinking about research synthesis and mobilization to change practice and inform policy. There's often overlap in some capacity among the centers. Um, for example, NCEE has a formal structure through the What Works Clearinghouse um, to, to create research syntheses, although that work can happen as part of the research centers as well. So we're constantly evolving as an organization to figure out the best ways we can support each other and our mission. We have ongoing conversations about the relationships among the centers. We think our structure and our process is working well, but we're always looking for ways to improve. Over these 20 years, IES and Nixer in particular have been building the foundations necessary to continue to advance science and practice in special education through, for example, building the research evidence base, expanding the research capacity in the field, and sharing what we're learning broadly. Now I'm going to transition to providing a funding overview and recent highlights from the center and IES. Everyone's concern is money. So this slide shows you the Nixer appropriations um, from Congress since 2006. We did receive our appropriation for FY23, our current year, and it's a, in an, it is an appropriation, not a continuing resolution, which is great. Um, as you can see, in 2023, we, we received a $4 million increase over 2022, 
and that represents a nearly $6 million increase over the last two years. That is really great news for Nexer, and thanks to all of you for helping to get the word out that there's a great need for research in the special education area and that the investment is paying off. That said, what about funding for new awards? So new award funds are what's left over when we take out continuation costs um, for our grant commitments in prior years and any current expenses, such as we contribute funds for our peer review process. So this slide shows the amount of funding available for new awards over that same time frame. We are very grateful for the additional $4 million that we received this year. If you see in FY22, um, we could not hold our regular research grant competitions due to funding limitations. We are in better shape for FY23, but you can also notice we're not quite as high as we were um, in, available front, in available funds as we were two to three years ago. Of course, the more money we, spawn, we spend on any new awards in any given year, the higher our continuation cost will be, which then impacts the availability of funds for new awards in later years. Right now, we're in the midst of making those new award decisions for FY23. Even though we could not run our regular grant comp competitions in 22, IES did receive funds through the American Rescue Plan. With those funds, we were able to hold one competition, our research to accelerate pandemic recovery in special education. The purpose of this program was to support research to address pandemic-related issues affecting learners with or at risk for disabilities. There's a, all, it, all in all, Nixer funded nine pandemic recovery grants in the areas of math, literacy, social and emotional and behavioral skills, and autism screening. There's a lot of really great work happening in those grants, which will help schools, parents, and students in recovery efforts. Nixer did a blog series on these pandemic recovery grants, so definitely check out that blog page to learn more about them. We were also lucky um, to be able to use funds that we did have in FY22 um, to fund special education research grants from FY21 that scored in the fundable range, but that we were, we were unable to fund due to limited funds that year as well. So we're able to fund those four grants, as well as one methods training grant that's focused on building and evaluating adaptive interventions um, in the use of smart designs. I'm also really happy um, to talk about, also with us with AR, ARP funds, Nixer co-funded an AI Institute with the National Science Foundation that was recently awarded to the State University of New York at Buffalo. It's focused on addressing the limited availability of speech and language services for children who need them, a problem that has certainly worsened as a result of the pandemic. The goal of the AI Institute is to widen access to these services through the development of two key innovations. The first is an AI screener that will allow for universal early screening for all children. And the second is what they are referring to as the AI orchestrator, which will help speech language pathologists implement evidence-based interventions and assess their effects on student goal attainment. We're really excited about the potential of this institute they are just a few months into the work, so definitely stay tuned to learn more about their work. Also with ARP funds, we were able to um, explore the idea of using prize money um, to spur innovation in education research. So we have these learning acceleration prizes. Um, we had a math prize and a science prize. So the math prize um, was to incentivize innovation in digital mathematics interventions to significantly improve fractions learning for upper elementary students with disabilities. Phase one of the, of the prize is complete. Um, an expert panel reviewed submissions of potential interventions and chose two finalists to move on to phase two. So currently in phase two, the selected finalists are implementing their digital interventions at partner schools during this school year. As they compete for the final prize, each team will study the impact of their intervention on student outcomes, determine how to address implementation challenges, and plan for scaling up of their digital math solutions in the future. We did also offer a science prize, um, which was targeted on improving science learning for low performers in middle school. Phase one is was completed. 
An expert panel did review submissions, but no projects were chosen to move on to phase two, so the science price has ended. We are currently working with a contractor who has worked on the math and science prizes with us on lessons learned regarding the use of prizes as a mechanism to incentivize innovation in education. So it's something that we're currently thinking about at Nixer, whether or not this is something that um, we would like to continue and how we can best think creatively about incentivizing innovation. So our current competitions are FY23 competitions. We had three competitions. Those requests went out over the summer and all of these competitions are closed right now. The first was our primary um, program, the Special Education Research Grants Program, which all of you are familiar with. We also competed the Early Career Development and Mentoring Program. If you're not familiar with this program, the purpose is to support new investigators specifically those at academic institutions who are within five years of getting a PhD or completing a postdoc at the time of applying. Um, and we support them to conduct an integrated research and training plan focused on learners with or at risk for disabilities under the guidance of experienced mentors. We are currently making funding decisions for those first two competitions. The third competition we were able to offer this year was a research and development center focused on supporting students with disabilities in post-secondary education. The center will conduct exploratory research on the experiences and outcomes of post-sec students, as well as the policies, programs, and practices that are intended to help them succeed in post-secondary education. The applications to this competition are currently under review. Finally, earlier this year, we held a technical working group um, focused on the teacher workforce, the special education teacher workforce, um, to help us identify and prioritize the types of research that would best inform practice. Um, so how are ways that we can better prepare, support, and retain affected special education workforce? It was a really great and lively discussion that raised a lot of issues and a lot of ideas for us to think about. The summary of this TWIG meeting will be out sometime later this spring, and I'm going to talk more about this area in a minute when discussing future directions. So over the last 10 years or so, there have been efforts government-wide to increase access to federally funded research. So um, open science is about efforts to facilitate research access, transparency, and accelerate the, the development of new knowledge. So IES and NICSER have had requirements in place over the last few years, such as public access to data and data sharing that apply to certain studies and requirements for all, all of you to submit final manuscripts to ERIC, which makes them freely available to others. So I did wanna take just a minute to highlight the requirement for publications. First, to thank you all for your efforts in ensuring that your publications are uploaded to ERIC. If you receive a new award from us, um, you will now see that we do check to make sure that you have uploaded to ERIC final publications from prior grants. So if you have not, we'll ask you to do that at that time of new award. You can see by this table that the number of full text manuscripts available is growing. The delay that you see is due to embargo rules and updates are coming on regarding embargo, which again, I will address in a minute as well. Um, but if you looked at this table over the last few years, you'd see tremendous improvement in the number of, of manuscripts that are included in ERIC and the number of full texts are, are available. So again, I thank you all for your work in this area. I know uploading to ERIC is not always an easy process. And one thing that we have heard from the ERIC team is that one that a common error is a failure to acknowledge your funding on the form and in the PDF. The PDF is not in compliance without the grant number. So the grant number or the contract number must appear in the online submission form and in the acknowledgement form or the acknowledgement section of your document. If for some reason you fail to acknowledge your funding on the PDF, Eric will ask you to resubmit with a cover sheet that has a revised acknowledgement section. It's a quick and easy thing to do. So if you're asked to do that, please do so. There is a new public access policy coming down the pipe. So last year, the Office of Science, Technology, and Policy updated guidance to make results of taxpayer-supported research immediately available to the American public. So I mentioned the embargo um, with getting full text available through ERIC. That will be changing. 
IES has been working on updating our policy to comply with this new guidance. So please consider um, joining NCER's Laura Nemi and Liz Albro this Thursday at one o'clock for a conversation about what's coming next with Open Science at IES. All right, so looking to the future for Nixer. There are a few things that I wanna talk about the current focus for Nixer. One are some areas of opportunity that we see um, for continued research or, or increased emphasis in research in, in these areas. I'll talk about FY24 competitions, and then three areas that have also been of concern and a lot of activity recently at Nixer and IES, and that relates to transparency, equity, and broadening participation. So three areas of opportunity that we see at Nexa are the special education teacher workforce, special education finance, and measures for learners with disabilities. So an area that's really right for research is the special education teacher workforce area. Chronic and in some case worsening shortages of special educators have really highlighted a need for more research on teacher preparation, certification, workforce entry, well-being, and retention. So this is one area where Nixer has funded relatively little and was one of the reasons for the twig that I mentioned earlier on the teacher workforce. So this is an area that's really concerning to us and an area that we would like to support additional re research in the near future. The second area is special education finance. So some of you may already know that in June of last year, IES sponsored a, another technical working group to better understand the current and future landscape of education finance and to identify ways that we could better support research in this area. So experts identified special education finance as an area in need of more research. We would like to support additional research in this area. One exciting thing happening is that the um, National Center for Education Evaluation and Regional Assistance at IES is currently conducting a study of special education funding that will examine how much districts spend, how funds are spent, et cetera. They're in planning phases um, of this work right now. So it will be a little while before they're actively engaged in data collection. But the last study, the Special Education Expenditure Project um, by OSA was completed with data from 1999 to the 2000 um, school year. So it will be really important to have this information. We're really excited about that. Finally, we're always talking about the need for new measures or for existing measures to be adapted and validated with learners with disabilities. Although Nixer has invested in measurement work, the need is still great. IES has provided some funding for Ed Instruments, which is a library of educational measures. We have been working with them to suggest more measures used with students with disabilities to add to the site. If you aren't familiar with Ed Instruments, I would suggest you check them out. Um, and you can make suggestions for measures to include. They have a spot on the website where you can offer those suggestions. So I definitely encourage you to do that. Okay, so our FY24 competitions. Um, given what we're seeing with funds needed for FY23, and again, we are making those funding decisions right now, we have limited funding available for new awards in FY24. Um, so we're currently working through options to think about what competitions we're going to um, be able to offer in FY24. We would like to continue to support training grants to build capacity in the field. We've been also thinking across centers about how to best support high quality knowledge synthesis beyond what the What Works Clearinghouse already does so well in knowledge use, and then as well as identifying areas such as those areas of opportunities I just noted above, um, as well as other ideas that could further address pandemic impact and or address critical issues in the field. So we're taking into account all of these things as we plan for our FY24 grants. So transparency in our grant funding and our processes is important to IES and to Nixer. And we've been working recently to ensure that we're being as transparent as possible, as well as increasing our understanding of who we're reaching through our grant programs, that we're reaching a wide audience. So many of you know, we've recently begun to use a form to, to collect personal data from applicants. 
starting in FY21 and FY22. And we're currently working with our disclosure review board on the best way to share that information um, while also protecting privacy. Nixer and NCER both um, together have awarded a contract to develop indicators of success for training programs and to develop a plan to collect and report available data. So how, who's participating in our training programs? How well are we serving them? Then in addition to who's participating as a PI or a co-PI, we're also interested in the reach of our funded grants. So who is participating in our research studies? So we have recently surveyed some grantees to determine what information is routinely collected about study samples. Another aspect of transparency is receiving input from the field. So there are various ways that we have received input from the field over the years. Uh, technical working groups, as I've mentioned a couple of times um, thus far, is certainly one way that we seek input from the field on particular issues. We have also held a series of listening sessions um, over the last couple of years to try and get that input from the field as well. And NCER recently posted a request for information seeking perspectives from the field on topic areas that they should focus on for their upcoming R&D centers. So we're continuing to think as an institute and then Nixer as a center about better or more varied ways to engage the field and the public in our research efforts. Equity has always been a focus of the work that we support, particularly looking at differences, for example, for students with disabilities and their peers without disabilities. But we also wanna push the field in thinking about equity and disability, such as differing access to resources and opportunities within disability populations. IES has expanded the SEER principles to include an explicit focus on equity now. So we have a SEER equity principle. And this is really intended um, for researchers who are designing and testing interventions to clearly demonstrate how those interventions address education inequities, um, such as improving learning outcomes, et cetera. Nixer, or excuse me, IES held a TWIG meeting to identify tools and resources to support the implementation of the SEER equity principle in education research. And we um, plan for that TWIG summary to be posted on the website soon. And tied into all of this, the transparency, the equity, um, this last area of focus is broadening participation. So collecting data to better, better understand who is or not participating in our grant programs, our training opportunities. Um, in the past decade or so, our, our attention has been on broadening who is participating in our work and identifying opportunities to do better in this area. So again, the two research centers have awarded a contract to carry out what we're calling a landscape analysis to assess best practices for broadening participation in our grant programs, including the peer review process. So we're looking at other agencies, um, other organizations to try and learn more about what they're doing about broadening participation and see um, ways that we can improve the work that we're doing um, on our end as well. And finally, just a few asks. One, um, I know sometimes it'll sound like a broken record on uploading um, your manuscripts to ERIC, but please continue to upload your articles into ERIC. It's really important for that open science um, and getting information about, current, about federally funded grants to the public. I also just wanted to clarify one thing on using the IES logo. We definitely encourage you to use the IES logo on presentations and other areas as appropriate. We do have an approval process. Um, so some, some folks continue to think we might not allow the use of our IES logo, but we do and we encourage it. If you haven't worked with your program officer on getting approval for use of our IES logo, please reach out to them. There's a really short form you fill out and then our communications director will send you all the logos that you would ever need in any format that you need um, to use the logos and materials as again as appropriate. Certainly help us identify good candidates for a Nixer hire. We're thrilled to be able to hire two new um, folks to join our staff. So if you have any recommendations, um, reach out to us or encourage folks to reach out to us to find out more about the, the positions we have available. 
And then finally, help us disseminate research. We're always looking for new creative ways and thinking about how we get our research into the hands of those that will use it. Some of you may be doing some really creative things related to dissemination. We've increased our dissemination efforts over the last few years now, as you know, requiring dissemination plans in our um, applications. We're always looking for ideas in this area. So always feel free to share your ideas with us in that regard. So thank you very much. Um, if you have any questions, you can always find me at the email address that you see on the screen. Um, email is usually the best way to contact me, particularly in this hybrid work environment. Um, it's usually faster for me to respond to email. Um, so thank you for listening and I look forward to um, engaging with you in our Q&A session now. Okay, for the sake of time, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, thank you everyone for being here. I hope folks that did get a chance to watch the pre-recorded talk, and I'm really happy to have this opportunity to for some Q&A time with you. If you have a question, please enter it in the Q&A box. Uh, Nixer program officers Katie Taylor and Akila Nelson will be helping with the questions today. But before we launch into questions, I just wanted to say a few things. First, I want to publicly thank Nixer staff. When Joan retired and I took on the acting role, everyone at Nixer has been at 200% plus effort. And as much as I've tried to do the work of two jobs, apologies to my grantees who know um, it takes a little bit of time to get a hold of me now. It quickly became obvious that was not feasible, so everyone has taken on additional work. I really want to thank each and every one of them for their support. So please send your PO some shine when you get a chance. They've done an incredible amount of work these last few months. And I also want to shout out to Katie and Akila for their work representing Nixer on the PI Meeting Planning Committee. Their work has really enhanced the quality of the programming that you're going to experience over these next few days. And of course, thank you to you all as well. Nixer wouldn't exist without you. I want to thank you for your unwavering commitment to students with disabilities, to high quality research, and to believing in the mission of Nixer and helping us think through ways that we can improve. And particularly over these last few years as COVID disrupted lives, schooling, your research endeavors, each year seems to bring new challenges and you all face it with openness, flexibility and perseverance. Um, so I thank you for, for that. And then two other quick updates since my recording. We are moving forward on looking for a permanent commissioner for Nixer. I have nothing to report though on that right now, so stay tuned. And finally, I know a question on everyone's mind is upcoming funding opportunities. So NCER and Nixer are planning on releasing funding opportunities. I can't tell you what those are right now, um, but we hope to have a federal register notice out fairly soon, which will at least announce those opportunities, opportunities that we will have available. So with that, let's hop into um, Q&A. So again, if you if you have a question for Jackie, you can just type it into the um, into the Q and A box. Maybe everyone's questions were on RFA. Is that? <laughs> I have no additional information for. Okay, so we have our first question here. Um, okay, so Jackie, any ideas what percentage of fundable SCORE grants will be funded this year? So um, we have the, for the FY23, I'm assuming that's the question of the ones that are currently um, being, uh, they're in a, in a funding stage. Um, so the, the percentage of, of applications funded is really information that comes out of our standards and review office and our office of science. Um, so once the new, once new awards are made and finalized and um, made publicly available, our standards and review office is able to um, provide some information about, about funding rates. Um, so we can certainly, um, you can certainly circle back with us and, and we can try and answer that question in the future. Okay, I have a question. 
Could you talk a little more about high quality research synthesis emphasis? Sure. So it's a good question. So we've been we've been talking about this um, for a while within the institute and trying to think of ways to further um, spur synthesis syntheses within the work um, across NCER and Nixer. So we've been talking about ways to do that. They've always been allowed under the exploration grant, um, and so. Um, we, we've always had a, an emphasis on it, but we would just like to encourage folks to consider that work. We funded a lot of research. We funded a lot of development work, a lot of efficacy work, and there's just potentially greater opportunity to synthesize some of that information. And so um, we're just looking at ways that, again, how we can further incentivize that for researchers. Okay. Um, so the next question is, you may not be able to predict this right now, but will there be additional funding for specialty projects and networks like unsolicited projects, teams of researchers working together to answer common questions across sites, things like that? Yeah, it's a great question too. And so we're, we're always thinking of ways um, to think about Think creatively about what we fund about um, different research mechanisms. Very much so it's tied to funding availability and what we have the ability to be able to fund outside of our standard research competitions in addition to our standard research competitions. You've heard from Mark, he's talked a lot about uh, the next generation of education research. So absolutely there are opportunities. Um, we are in the process of, of working again on those 24 RFAs, um, as well as, as looking further ahead to think about ways that we can picking up a little bit. For your, can you say your last sentence again? <laughs> Um, I know you're, you guys are lagging for me too. I'm not sure what I said, but I was saying that uh, yes, uh, yes to the idea of additional opportunities for um, research that is beyond our typical research competitions, networks, other innovative um, ideas to, for research ideas. We are thinking about this. There's support from leadership for that. Um, and so, but I was saying again, it is tied to availability of funding. And so, um, yes, absolutely. We are, we are thinking about various new initiatives. Okay, um, Jackie, could you provide more information about next steps following up on the TWIG on the special education teacher workforce you discussed in the recorded presentation. Absolutely, um, that, was a, that was a great twig and thanks to Katie for, for organizing that twig. So there will be a summary um, on, of the twig that will be available on our website, um, hopefully soon. Um, and then we are thinking about various ways that we can support funding for um, teacher workforce uh, research uh, in, the, in the future. Okay, so um, next question is about um, NAEP. So in the in the opening this morning, Mark, uh, Mark brought up great points about the potential of NAEP data. Uh, it does provide a wealth of information for the students who participate. However, there's a segment of students with disabilities that are not represented in that data, um, specifically those who take their state's alternate assessment. Uh, is this a consideration of IES slash Nixer? Um, as far as what data sources can be used to make decisions um, and who is represented in the data? It's, a, it's an excellent question and an excellent consideration when we think about the NAEP data and exploration of NAEP data, because we recognize that there is a segment of students who are not represented in that data, absolutely. Um, and so the work on alternate assessment, um, we have funded some work over the years on alternate assessment. Um, inclusion of students in alternate assessments, and it's work that we um, definitely would like to try and continue. Um, but we welcome ideas um, to help us think creatively and ways that we can better support the work on the alternate assessment and then recognizing how these um, decisions on these large scale tests are being used um, to benefit or not students with disabilities.
So I think we have time for maybe one or two more questions because um, everything's been a little bit delayed this morning um, and we have a 30 minute break after this session. Uh, so if there are any last questions, feel free to type them in the Q&A box. If there are no other questions, I just wanna thank you all again and certainly feel free to reach out to myself or any of the, the Nixer program officers with your thoughts, questions. And again, we're, we're always open to, to new ideas and helping us think through ways that we can further the research for students with disabilities. So we welcome um, any and all input. Oh, it looks like we do have one more question if you're open, Jackie. Did you froze? <laughs> um, can you talk more about possible projects centered around supporting teacher workforce training, exploration work, or teacher prep? Um, that's uh, also another excellent question. And so I think um, any and all, we've been talking about new potential um request for application all right can you hear me now yes is that better okay <laughs> I know. Sorry. Um, so again, um, yes, we are thinking about the various ways that we can support teacher workforce training, which would include potentially exploration work um, and a variety of other potential projects um, that could address the issues for, for the teacher workforce. I think there's a lot that could be done. Um, and so I think you may see some of this reflected in the um, FY24 request for applications as well. We've been really thinking about this and how to support this kind of work. Um, so especially once those new RFAs are released, absolutely reach out to program officers and we can further discuss in more detail of some of those, those potential ideas. All right, thank you all.